All right guys, it's Ross. So in today's video, I thought I would take you guys around the yard and share with you a number of fruit trees that uh, are just must haves. You know, I've been doing this for a number of years and there are some fruit trees that I think people recommend or fruiting plants, whether that's a vine, a bush, a shrub, whatever. Um, that people recommend, and I think there's some that just don't get enough attention. Um, personally, I'm still learning and I'm still experimenting with different varieties because it's not just enough to say, oh, grow peaches. What about a particular variety of peach that really blows you away? And that's actually this one right here called the Indian Free Peach. It's a blood peach because actually it's getting a reddish interior to it. I'll show a photo of it right now. It is mind-blowingly complex and good. It's just like the perfect peach. And if you've never eaten this peach, I would argue you've never even had a peach because it's that good. Even a homegrown peach like Red Haven, that's a really good quality peach, uh, just doesn't compare to this. It kind of takes the best qualities of a white peach, a white flesh peach and a normal yellow flesh peach. Puts them together and you get the most complex peach I've ever had. Uh, so this is one of my recommendations here. It's also, by the way, the last one here to bloom, to be into full bloom. I don't know if that would be a normal occurrence, um, but it is also a later peach to actually fruit. So it can potentially extend your peach harvest season, which is a nice thing for backyard growers. Now, the next tree actually is right next to us that I would highly, highly, highly recommend, which is the persimmon. This is, um, if I had to make one recommendation, I think, other than the fig tree, it would be this. The persimmon, and there's so many varieties out there, guys, um, but the persimmon is incredible. Um, I would argue, though, that you've got to try an astringent persimmon. Those fuyu types and the crunchy ones that you eat like an apple are good, but in my opinion, there's nothing that comes close to an astringent persimmon. Um, I think, believe it or not, it is my best fruit here. Better than the fig, which I'm obsessed with. And uh, I'll tell you that uh, these are extremely hard to find, expensive, all you have to do is plant yourself a tree and you're going to have more persimmons than you know what to do with in the future that can, in all honesty, can last you for an entire year. You can preserve them and dry them and make yourself something called hoshigaki, which is one of the best dried fruits that you can grow. And I would argue they rival something like the majul date, which is a really creamy, amazing date. So these are a fruit that extends the season because you harvest them in the fall. You can harvest them all the way into some varieties into the spring. Even now, you could potentially be harvesting ripe persimmons off of your tree. And, or you can take them off the tree, dry them, preserve them, and have them all wintertime in that way. So for me, I think uh, it's a no-brainer. Nothing bothers it. It's vigorous, it's beautiful. Uh, it is the best tree, like in all regards, the fruit quality and also just, you know, how beautiful it is and how ornamental it is. And then it's just problem free. So these trees right here are not really, I don't know, beautiful right now. There's, <laughs> they look like there's nothing going on with them, but they just bloomed and now the fruits are in the shuck because these are my apricots and they're the first ones to bloom on this property. And that does present challenges for many of us. However, I think apricots are so darn tasty that it would be a shame in my opinion to uh, not actually grow them, not give them a chance. Yes, I don't think you're guaranteed fruit every single year, just like a lot of the stone fruits, you know, maybe one out of, or two out of five years you might lose your entire crop to a late frost. Um, it's very possible and it's, it's very likely, unfortunately. But I find uh, the apricot is so amazing when homegrown, particularly a variety here that's very small. 
that I had grafted uh, to actually make an extra copy. That's how much I loved this apricot because I wanted to make another tree of it to have more fruits. Um, it's called Early Blush. And I know Adams County Nursery sells it and they probably, I think, have the, uh, the trademark on it um, or the proprietary um, holdings on it. But, uh, you know, it's definitely something, if you can find it, you can, you can definitely get it as a backyard grower. I think it's a must, a must grow um, in terms of not just having an apricot, but having a variety that really blew me away when I tasted it. The next tree actually that I highly recommend is behind it. And I know that you guys can't really see this that well, so I'm gonna move you guys. But it's actually a pear tree, but it's not your typical pear. Um, this is an Asian pear. And Asian pears, um, in my opinion, are tastier than their counterparts of the European pears. However, there is a pear called Kamas that I really, really, really enjoy and recommend. And I would argue you have to grow that one as well. But if I had to choose, I think, between Kamas and an Asian pear, I think I would just more often than not prefer the Asian pear. And uh, we struggle with fire blight here, so I've lost a few pears over the years. But if you can get them, you know, in a fire blight free area or really keep an eye on your trees, maybe find the right rootstock. Although this one's supposed to be fire blight resistant, um, it's really key. Maybe you don't get any rain when they're blooming. They're about to open and hopefully they open soon because there's no rain in the forecast just yet but that's really when a lot of the uh, fire blight in the area could be worse and spread from tree to tree um, certainly the asian pear i would argue as i've said is it really is a great piece of fruit and even if you get them at the store they're good but they're not great because you really need to make sure that when you pick them here on your property that you let them turn orange and they really develop those full flavors. They're not as, let's say, bland. Um, they really develop a full wide variety of, of flavors. So for me, I think the Asian pear is king. I love the texture. Um, it's got really great little vesicles in it that are almost crunchy in a sense um, to give it like the perfect texture, in my opinion, of a fruit. It's so great. Um, other than something jammy, I really like crunchy things. And this to me has that perfect crunch that I'm looking for along with a great flavor. Now, there's actually another thing over here in this section of the yard that I'm a huge fan of now. And I would say out of all the berries, this is my favorite. This is my number one recommendation. It's called the Marion Berry. And it doesn't look like much because I haven't uh, been growing them for very long. I really only got a <laughs> very small taste last year, but it blew me away so much that I said, holy crap, this is the best tasting berry I've ever had and I must grow more of them. So I've actually tip rooted some of them. I have another plant over there. This guy here is growing up the wire now. And then I have some plants back here which are growing up this side of the T-post to then eventually go along the wire. We'll get ourselves some fruit now that uh, we have more wood from last year as they fruit on last year's canes. Uh, they're not primocane fruiting blackberries. And oddly enough, they don't really taste like blackberries either. It's a cross between a raspberry and a blackberry. And uh, what's nice about them, it's like, it's, it's really an experience like you're eating a blackberry. So when you bite into it and you look at it and you have that mouthfeel experience, it is a blackberry. However, uh, it has the most intense raspberry flavor that I have never even had from a raspberry. So it's an explosion of flavors in your mouth. As we talked about with that Indian free peach, it really does combine the best qualities, I think, of a blackberry and a raspberry in one. 
These uh, raspberry blackberry hybrids got to be really special. And this is the one that they say is the tastiest. And I would, I have to agree after tasting it, it, I don't know how you can beat something like that. It's so, so good. I'd also mention that I have persimmons planted in here. And uh, one persimmon variety recommendation I have to make is a fruit called Sejo. Um, it's a really, really tasty piece of fruit. And it is, of course, astringent. All right, guys, I've got about three more fruits to share with you guys. This one here is the strawberry. And I have it actually in a raised bed that we planted, we've created. We planted them in a raised bed and then we put a door on the top of the raised bed that's on a hinge. It's got a handle and it has some insect netting over top. I think it's a brilliant way of growing strawberries because you can really easily keep all the critters out, all the pests, slugs, birds, uh, groundhogs, skunks, rabbits, everything in this backyard loves strawberries. And I have to really admit that I love this particular strawberry. I've talked about it for years. It's called the Mar de Bois. It's a French strawberry. And there's a few, I think, European varieties that uh, are really something special. I'd love to try them someday. But the Mar de Bois is extremely hard to beat. It really has a wild strawberry, even an alpine-like strawberry flavor. And I would argue you gotta grow the alpine strawberry as well, but the Mar de Bois, I think, has got great fruit size for a strawberry, um, at least for the flavor of a strawberry that you're looking for. And it's got the amazing flavor that you're looking for. So it's got kind of the best of both worlds. If you think of an alpine as a, the tastiest strawberry in existence, which in my opinion it is, but you were to have it in a larger size, it's as close as you can get, I think. Now the flavor is a little bit different than your typical strawberry. So I would recommend something like Early Glow for your classic strawberry flavor, or even um, something called Rucker Scarlet, which is a new variety that was just released that I actually enjoy a lot more than Early Glow. And that will give you a nice balance of fruit throughout the year. One is a June bear, one is an ever bearing like you see here. Now, this might be day neutral, this Mar de Bois. I'm not exact, I think it's an ever bearing strawberry. Regardless, the Mar de Bois will produce a heavy crop in, in the June, in the spring, and then it will stop, but then it will continue on for the rest of the season starting actually in, uh, in August. So this particular strawberry produces for a very long portion of the season and it doesn't stop. So it's really nice, I think, if you were just gonna have one, I would obviously take this Mar de Bois. Now, the next fruit that I think everybody must grow in their life is of course the grape. And uh, my grapevines in this area of the yard have been struggling a bit, but this Mars grape has been a chant and it produced some really, really high quality fruits last year. A lot of people struggle with disease and they end up spraying their grapes quite a bit and I did that for years, uh, really struggling with disease until I finally learned that you could bag your grapes with wax paper bags, bag the clusters, you protect them from critters and insects, all kinds of things, but you also protect them from disease. And as long as you get yourself a powdery mildew resistant variety, you won't have to deal with that. The worst thing you deal with is something called black rot, but if you bag them, you have no problems you let the grapes hang on the vine for as long as possible. They'll develop so much flavor and so much sugar. You don't even know what a grape tastes like until you've had them straight off the vine. And there's some really awesome varieties out there. So hats off to you guys. If you live in a climate that's quite dry and disease free, you can grow some real interesting varieties of grapes. If you just get yourself in this climate, a Concord style like Mars or even Everest seedless, I think you'll be very happy with uh, the quality and the production and the performance of your vine. So the last fruit tree here, guys, that I recommend, and uh, I think I could really recommend quite a few more in the future, but at least for now, 
if we're making a must-have list, this has got to be on it. And, you know, I didn't even mention the fig, by the way. I could very easily mention the pawpaw. Um, I could very easily, I think, add raspberries to that list or blueberries, the gooseberry. I mean, there's a lot of great fruits. What about apples? I mean, I didn't even mention apples, but for my own experience, this is the best berry that you've never even heard of. It's called Gumi. And this is a variety here called Carmine. Um, it goes by, I think, a couple names, but it produces a very large berry. And the pit to flesh ratio is, uh, is acceptable. Um, they are one of the best things, I always look forward to them. I come out here uh, every June and chow on these, one of the first things of the year. They produce abundantly, they're problem free, uh, they're loaded with flowers, it's a uh, nitrogen fixer. The bush doesn't get too big because I've been able to, I guess at least so far, control the size of it. Um, just by doing some pruning, you could keep this, I think, six by six. I don't think that's really a big problem. Uh, the birds love them. They're, they're red berries early in the season, so you got to net this thing. But it produces a very, very good, complexly flavored berry. Uh, early in the season, you can make great wine out of it. It's uh, got some nice astringency to it. It's sweet. Um, it's a little bit tart. It's a wonderful, wonderful berry that even can dry up on the plant and become a super sweet, super good that resembles something a lot like a gummy bear. And that's why they call it Gumi, because they named it after a gummy bear. It's true. Uh, it's really not something that I would consider a novelty. This is a must grow, a must have plant on your property that I think a lot of people just don't know about. So that sort of wraps up this little video here, guys. Um, there's so many fruits and things that you can grow in a temperate climate, but as I said, I really wanted to spend some time just dedicating this video towards my favorite fruits and things that I, I highly recommend. You know, it's not too late in the season to plant something. Maybe for some of you guys, it definitely is, but here in the Northeast, it's not too late just yet. Maybe you could still find something. I know that this video probably would have been more timely in the winter time. But this will give you something to look forward to, uh, at least in the future, maybe something to add to your list. Uh, the fig, by the way, we didn't give any love, but of course I would recommend, guys, that you grow the fig. Uh, no doubt in my mind. <clears throat> but we've done so many videos on the fig that I don't think I really need to explain that. Um, so yeah, those are the, the fruit varieties here, guys, and the species that I recommend. We'll see you guys soon, all right? Hit that subscribe button for me if you got something out of this. We'll see everybody soon. Take care, guys.